This is Crimson 741 issuing an SOS. Can anyone read me? Over. You're going to need to move to higher ground and you're going to need to do it quick. We are leaving orbit in 0, 0800 hours. The situation is extremely hostile. Requesting immediate evac. We read you loud and clear, Crimson. What is your situation? Welcome to the channel, my name is Kai Song and what you just watched was a sizzle trailer for a short film that I filmed way back in the summer of last year and literally have had no time to work on it until now. And when Digital Glue heard that I was working on a short film, they kindly sent me this, a Data Color Spider X Pro to help me correctly calibrate my monitor to ensure that my color correction was right on my short film. Now Datacolor is the global color solutions company and the Spider-X Pro is currently one of the fastest calibration devices on the market. So how does it work? Well, let's run through a quick demo of setting it up. So here we are with the MacBook Pro and the Datacolor Spider-X Pro and we're gonna use it now to make sure that our screen is correctly calibrated. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is go to the Spider-X, activate your Spider-X. We're just going to download the software, the Spider X Pro for the MacBook OS. Just quickly extract it. And we're going to run that PKG file. Continue, 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 agree, install. Okay, installing it now. Installation successful. So we've installed that now. Open up the Spider X Pro software. So the next thing to do is it's saying that to make sure that the device is plugged in. So we're going to put it in via USB. And next, activation successful. So I have previously installed this on my PC, which I think is the reason why it's kind of just come up with that straight away. Before, the serial number in the box, in the back of the box here, is what I used to register it. Have you allowed your display to warm up for half an hour? Have you checked there's no intense light falling directly on your display screen? I'll just have to turn this down a bit. <laughs> now you can't see me. Display, have you reset your monitor settings? Uh, spider connection, plug the spider, yes. And it's a laptop. Yep. And it's an Apple Pro. I'm at Retina. MacBook Pro Retina late 2016 is wide LED. Let's go with wide LED. And next, full calibration of your display, please. And now we get to put the spider onto the screen. We have to place it in the little box that it fits in. And when that is done, we hit next. And this is the calibration process happening now. Finished, okay, we're finished, so let's click finish. Okay, name and save new profile, MacBook Pro 1. And you've got a calibration reminder here for one month. Let's just call this Apple MacBook Pro and put living room. Let's save that profile. Congratulations, your new profile has been created and your system will automatically use this new profile. And it's been saved into this location here, so let's go next. And now what we get to do is we can see the differences between them. So it says click the button for the uncalibrated view. Um, so we're looking at the calibrated view now, we switch it. And we can see some slight tone changes there. It actually looks warmer, a lot warmer than in the uncalibrated view. So the calibrated view looks, the skin tones look warmer. They look a bit more blue here um, and do the calibration so this is the calibrated view and this is uncalibrated so you can see it's definitely warmer so here we are in the studio and i want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what it's like to set the spider x pro up on a pc using a samsung screen so a 4k monitor that i'm using here just to give you an idea of what it's like so i'm going to open up my spider x pro software and have i let the screen warm up yes lighting conditions are good 
I've reset the display controls, or have I? Let's quickly do that. Reset all. Found it. I might regret this. Okay, so I've reset all my screen settings now. Have I connected the spider? No, I'm going to connect the spider now. Yes, it's connected. We're going to go for the standard LED here. We go next. And we want a full cowl on this screen. We're going to spider it up. Be a good spider. And we're going to next. We're running for the process now, so let's see how that goes. And that's finished. So we're going to click finished. Let's call this Office 1. Why not? save and we've got the calibration reminder again i'm going to save that congratulations so let's go to next we're looking at the calibrated view we can switch back to the uncalibrated view so this is the uncalibrated view and it looks greeny blue quite green quite cold and the calibrated view the skin tones actually look a bit more red a bit more warm have a bit more life in them i'm not sure how well you can see the difference between these two uncalibrated and calibrated and then if we click on that we can you go to the individual pictures so checking out the blues this is the uncalibrated view of the blues and that is the calibrated and you can see it's much warmer um, even on the concrete here look that looks a bit green and then that it looks really like red and blue there's a, a stark contrast and the Samsung 4k is not bad but it's probably not as good as the MacBook Pro the final screen is the overview and it's basically how your new calibrated setting compares to different uh, color or different calibration settings or different display gamuts. It's currently 100% of sRGB. It is 85% of NTSC. It's 87% of Adobe RGB and it's 98% of P3. And that is our screen calibrated. Now, one of the things you will notice is that the speed of the calibration is really quick, especially with the MacBook Pro. When I had set this up previously on my PC with the Samsung screen, I had to manually adjust some of the settings, but it seemed to calibrate automatically on the MacBook Pro, which is awesome. Also be mindful of the location you calibrate in. You don't want to calibrate in bright sunlight or have bright lights directly on the screen. And the software does actually give you a warning about this. Uh, make sure you have no intense light and next room's light is very high i need to darken the room this is what i've done to stop the light black out the room a bit i have darkened the room even more let's go back you also have the ability to save different monitor profiles for different working conditions now i film my sci-fi show evac in canon log and has some really rich blue scenes there was a lot of natural green and one of the characters is in reddish armor. And I really wanted the reds, greens, and blues to pop on screen. And having used the Spider-X Pro to help correctly calibrate my monitor, I felt that it really helped to achieve the look that I was going for with those colors. And I feel that it helped a lot to get the content over in a way that I wanted, or represented in a way that I wanted to my audience. So should you get one? Well, if you're a photographer, videographer, filmmaker, graphic designer, illustrator, animator, special effects artist, or anyone who deals with visual creativity in general, then it's probably a good idea to correctly calibrate your monitor so that you get a good representation of what you're working on. And this can be especially useful if you're working across multiple computers or screens for the same project. One thing to bear in mind is that your work is probably going to be viewed across multiple different devices and screens, and many of those will not be correctly calibrated. But as a visual creative, you want to ensure that your content looks as correct as possible when you send it into the world, regardless of what other people are using to view it. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. So what do you guys think? Are you strict on your screen calibration, or is it something that you've not even considered before? Well, let me know what you think down in the description below. A special thank you to Datacolor and Digital Glue for sending me this handy little Spider-X Pro to help me correctly calibrate my colors on my screen for my short film. And for those of you interested in EVAC, it should be coming out in summer of this year, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. So thank you for watching guys. 
stay creative, imagine, implement and inspire, stay safe, and I'll see you next time on Kai Creative.